Okay, the 2024 fluke season is soon upon us, and now that a legal fish is back to 18 inches, as God intended, techniques that target larger fluke on average is more relevant than ever. And no other technique comes close to the light single jig when we're talking about shallow water fluking, especially from land. Now you guys have seen the power of the single jig on my channel throughout the years. Multiple limit trips, doubles, triples, quadruples, up to 30 keepers in a tide with fish up to 9 pounds from shore. In the last couple of years, I've been holding private lessons for those interested in deep diving into the technique. Now I've launched the Cooking and Fishing website, and it will feature my complete virtual lesson course on light single jigging for fluke online. It's something I've spent a lot of time working on, so let's take a quick look at the site and how it lays out. So here's the main page. Now that CNF spinner blade will have its own video later on, but the virtual lesson page, how it works is you register on the website, make the purchase, and then you access it through the products tab on top. That will bring you to the lesson page. Now I should mention here that from now until the season starts on May 4th, use code preseason at checkout for 10% off. In any case, the virtual lesson mainly consists of a series of videos that amount to just under an hour of footage total. That was a huge challenge, by the way, condensing all that info and nuance down to 50-something minutes. The first version I started with was a 3-hour-plus monstrosity, and I knew no one would have the time or patience to wade through that morass. Now when you're trying to explain a relatively complex concept, in this case, the fundamentals and mechanics that goes into a jigging technique, quantity is not the goal. You want clear, concise explanations, and here it really helps that I had over 50 in-person private lessons to draw from. Being able to see the patterns and what people had the most problems with, common mistakes I witnessed, and honing my own communication skills on the topic have all made the virtual lesson as informative as I can make it while cutting unnecessary bloat. Okay, so that's the website. Any questions you can leave in the comments section below and I'll try to answer them as soon as possible. Any issues with the lesson course itself, please use the contact button on the website. And now we're back to some miscellaneous footage from last season. Mainly clips I filmed after a private lesson was over, by the way. Now, as for in-person lessons, I'm inclined to direct people to the virtual course first. And after watching, if someone still wants to spend a few hours in person, we can discuss it through emails, DMs, etc. Now, one of the reasons I decided to undertake this project is simple. As much as I enjoyed meeting viewers and fishing with them, it was hard to balance my own fishing and filming time for the season with clients' needs. Scheduling was always a challenge, and weather delays were an absolute nightmare. And quite honestly, I think the virtual lesson is a better product in the sense that people can consume it at their own pace, rewatch key moments, skip parts they already feel comfortable with, so on and so forth. The only drawback is the diagnostic aspect of seeing someone jig in person, but we can deal with that via messages or perhaps even video conferencing. That's something I'll be thinking about depending on how the course is received. Now as for this channel, Cooking and Fishing on YouTube, nothing will change. There won't be any attempt at monetizing memberships, Patreon, none of it. If people just want to watch Fluke being caught on a single jig tip with gulp, all the videos are there in the archives and will be continually uploaded here. And if they want to take a further step to actually learn the technique in detail, that's what the online course is for. The only change will hopefully be more time to pursue interesting content as it relates to fluke fishing and perhaps other saltwater species in our neck of the woods as well.
While organizing clips for this video, I came across this lesson I had with Eddie last year. About a week or so after this, he sent me photos of an absolute monster he caught on the single jig. So a very belated congrats to Eddie for his PB. It will be a hard one to break from shore, or from boat for that matter. That, by the way, is an extremely lucky set of numbers if you're Chinese. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about fluke regulations and fisheries management in general. Now, I know some of you have heard talk about higher size limits as, quote, targeting the female breeders, since most fluke over 18 inches are indeed female. This is something I've heard repeated in the echo chambers of Facebook groups and fishing forums for a few years now. I should point out that the science fails to support this claim for a few reasons. First, recruitment for summer flounder has almost no correlation with the existing sex ratio in the population. So even if we grant that there is a sex ratio imbalance due to recreational effort, having fewer females has virtually no impact on recruitment. Second, a lower size limit will not guarantee the proportional harvesting of males versus females. In fact, it will violate one of the basic tenets of fishery science, removing fish before they even had a chance to spawn once. Now, an 18-inch fluke has completed on average two spawn cycles already, and there's been zero evidence for lowering size limits being beneficial to rebuilding the population quite the opposite. Now finally, you should be extremely suspicious of this argument considering its strongest proponents, the charter, party boat, and tackle industry, which in New Jersey amounts to the bulk of quote, recreational angling representation on the fishery council. Arguing that letting people kill smaller and smaller fluke actually helps the population now isn't that convenient? In any case, the one inch slot limit was an absolute joke, and I'm glad it was overturned. But when it comes to future management issues for flukes, sea bass, tog, striped bass, I encourage everyone to take a look at Charles Wittig's blog, One Angler's Voyage. I'll leave a link in the description below. He breaks everything down perfectly. Didn't mean to go on a huge rant, but I do feel strongly about that topic, as you can tell. Now, here's a clip I forgot about. Me testing out the Killy rig for the Killy video I dropped last year. It's a very small hook, an 8-pound liter, so I'm being careful with my drag setting here. Watching this again now, I must repeat the conclusion made in that video. There is no reason to use Killies in 2024. And here's the final clip and the only short you'll see in this entire video. One of my first open beach fluke on a crankbait. Now hopefully this is a foreshadowing of things to come for the 2024 season. There are many kinks to work out with throwing a crankbait from the beach, but that's okay because I do enjoy the process. Okay, I wish everyone an excellent fluke season. Check out the website, cookieandfishing.com. I appreciate everyone tuning in, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.